Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama. It's the camera store that has everything for photographers like you and me. Well, as photographers, sometimes we need to edit photos that are used as featured images on blogs or thumbnails for YouTube or Vimeo, or maybe images that are used for social media. And those images have to have a clearly defined subject. And so we can do that by changing the luminosity in different areas of our subject so we have one very focal point. We can take the attention of the viewer and point them to one specific place to say, hey, this article is about this, this video is about this specifically. So for example, if I was going to uh, make a thumbnail about Doug McKinley, I could take an image that looks sort of like this, sort of drab, there's not really any focal point. I could change a few things and make it look like this. We do that by adjusting the contrast, the luminosity of different areas. I like to call this luminosity focusing. It's really just a different take on burning and dodging. So let me show you how this works. There are five steps to this technique. Number one, make your global tonal adjustments. Number two, set focus using a radial filter. Number three, fine tune using adjustment brushes. Number four, add a vignette. And number five, add your finishing touches. Let me give you some real life examples of what this technique looks like. So we'll start here with an image that I used as a thumbnail, a featured image on an article I wrote about Matt Granger and I. We were doing a tog life and you can see the before image here, it's just a little lifeless. We have some nice, nice side light, but by adding these techniques, these five steps, I was able to really highlight Matt. This next image here, we can see that we have some lions in a field. They look pretty good right now, but before they were sort of lifeless. So by adding some luminosity focus, I was able to make them sort of glow in that green grass. Here's another image of my motorcycle, and this one is pretty subtle. So I'm gonna show this side by side here. You can see on the after image on the uh, right hand side, that the luminosity of the motorcycle is the same as before, but the surrounding areas have become a little bit darker and that really helps us to isolate the motorcycle. So here is before, here is after. It's a very subtle change, but it really helps us to look and see exactly what the subject of that picture is. Here is a really nice example of how we're gonna apply this. So I've broken these down into all five steps for this image of my friend Damien. Now again, this was a featured image uh, a thumbnail image for my blog and I wanted to really focus this on Damien. And so here is what we started with. This image is just not really exciting. There's all kinds of issues with it. We have uh, the wrong color. We've got bottles. We've got a logo that needs to go away. There are all kinds of things that need to be fixed with this. It's not a really great image, but I needed to make it work. So the first thing I did was I went in and I made my global adjustment. So I set my white balance, my black points, my shadows, the highlights, all of those things that you would normally do. I fixed the color and tonality. Then I needed to set the focus, the focal point. And I did that using a radial filter. So I'll go to the next step here and I'll go over here to the radial filter, click it and show you exactly how I added that. You can see we have this radial filter right on Damien's face. And what I've done here is I've taken the exposure down on everything outside of Damien's face. So you can see that everything is bright, now everything is dark except for his face. Almost like I used a little softbox on his face, but we did that in post-production. Once I had the radio filter, I really needed to go in and fine tune all of these other things. We've got bottles and logos, etc. And so I was able to do that using adjustment brushes. So I'll turn those on and you can see that we've cleaned up things quite a bit. So let me go in and show you how many adjustment brushes. Every single one of these dots is a different adjustment brush. So in this one right here, I took the highlights down all around Damien. This one right here, I changed the uh, highlights on his face. I changed his eyes, I changed his arm. And so I was able to go in and do some really specific fine tuning on this image. Now, once that was done, I went to step four. I added a vignette. Nothing super heavy, but just something to bring the focus again in. And then finally, step five, I added the finishing touches, which was a bit of clarity, quite a bit of clarity. And again, you can see here is the before image. Bleh. Here's the after image. That's something that we can actually use. All right, well, now that we've seen some before and after images, let's actually process an image start to finish. We're gonna start with an easy image. This is something I shot during my episode on the fake golden hour. This looks pretty good as is, but what we need to do is walk through each of these steps. 
Now, I've already finished step one, my global tonal adjustments. I've already set the white balance. I've already set my black point, my whites, all that stuff. So everything is there as I would normally have it. But now I want to really set the focus using my radio filters and my adjustment brushes. So we're going to do this in a very, very quick and easy way. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over here and click on my radial filter. And then I'm going to double click on effect, that actual word. And that resets everything so I know I'm starting from scratch. And then what I'll normally do with this technique is I'll take my exposure down by about one stop. So that's negative one. So it doesn't have to be exact. So negative 1.09, that's fine. And then I'm going to click and drag out a radial brush around the place that I want to be my focus. So I want our model to be the focus. So I'm going to drag this, click the center, and put it right about where I want this to be the highlight, the, the focal point. Once that's done, you can always grab these handles here and make this slimmer or longer. You can rotate this so you can get it into the, the exact position that you want. The other thing that you have to watch out for with the radial mask is that you make sure that the feather setting is correct. So if you have a zero feather, you can see there's no transition between our effect and the outside world. And if I have too much, well, the effect almost totally goes away. So you have to sort of pick a, a nice medium. So I'm going to pick about 40 and that looks pretty good. Again, you can always come in here and make adjustments later on. So it doesn't have to be exact. You can tweak these as you go. All right, I'm going to close that. The next thing I want to do is make this look a little less artificial. So I made it too dark over here. So the sun looks like something has happened that is not natural. So I'm going to go and grab an adjustment brush. Once again, double click effect to make sure I start from scratch. Then I'm going to take my exposure up by about half a stop. Remember, we took everything down by one stop. So now I'm going to bring that back up by half a stop. So it'll still be a little bit darker, but it's going to be uh, a little bit more pleasing. Now this brush, you can see that I can increase or decrease the size over here with this slider. Or if you have a mouse wheel, you can just mouse wheel up and down to change that. So I'm going to get a nice big brush. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to lighten up these bushes just a little bit. And maybe these shadows right here. I think that'll look a little bit more natural. All right, well that step is done. The next thing we need to do is just go in and add a vignette to this. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to close this. Then I'm going to go down here, just add a slight vignette, something about negative 15, 14, something like that. That looks pretty good. And then the last thing I'm going to do are my final touches. It doesn't really need a lot, but I'm going to add just a tiny bit of clarity just so we have all five steps. Okay, so that's what we got before and after. That looks pretty good, but let's do something that's a little bit more complicated. Here is a shot of Doug McKinley. Now this is an image that I want to use as the thumbnail for this video. And so it needs a lot of work. This is just not a very interesting image. And so let's take our five steps. Let's go through this one by one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save us a little bit of time. I've already done the uh, tonal adjustments. So I've saved that as a snapshot. I'm just going to click on this. I've already made my tonal adjustments. I set my black point, my white point, my shadows, my color temperature, and all of that. I did that in the past. And I saved that. I cheated just so this video wouldn't run forever. Okay, now that we have step one finished, let's walk through our filters. The first filter we want to work with is, again, a radial filter. So I'm going to click on that, double click effect, so we're starting from scratch. Then I'm going to take my exposure down by about a stop. It's a good starting point. So then I'm going to click and drag again on the thing that I want to be the focal point of our image, which is Doug. So I'm going to put this right over his face. I'm going to turn this just a little bit. And so there we go. We have a nice radial filter right on Doug's face. That's going to really bring him, pull him into focus, not focus from our lens, but focus from the standpoint of the thing that we want to look at in this image. So I'm going to close that. I like where we're headed with this. Next, let's fine tune some things using an ad adjustment brush. One of the problems with this image is the light's not great. So his eyes are a little bit underexposed. So I'm going to make a really small brush here. Double click effect. I'm going to go in here and adjust my uh, shadows. I'm going to open those up to about half a stop, a little bit more. So around the 50, 60 range. 
I'm just going to click on each of his eyes and that opens things up. Now I can play with the slider after I've applied those things to see exactly if I need more or less and I can change how that looks. So around 60, something like that. Okay, once I've done that, I need to clean up a few other things. So I'm going to click new to get a new adjustment brush. I'm going to double click effect so it resets all of my settings here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my highlights and my whites. I'm going to take those down around to about negative 50-ish, something like that. Remember, you can always change these later. So I'm going to get a really large brush by using my mouse wheel. I'm just going to paint down the left-hand side of this image really quickly. All right, so now we're starting to bring some focus to Doug. That looks pretty good. Well, the next thing I want to do is I want to fix the sky around Doug's head. So I'm going to just make a smaller brush here. And I think the highlights and the, the whites are eh, probably at a good place. So I'm just going to start painting this down. And that makes the sky a little bit less stark. And then there's a nice natural barrier here with this wall. So I'm just going to paint right there. Now one of the things to look out for is if I just uh, don't go far enough, I'm going to get this weird look on Doug's head. So I'm going to actually bring this brush into his hair just a little bit. Um, if you go too far, you can always hit uh, the option key and you'll be able to subtract. You'll get the erase brush. And you can erase this away. So if I erase too much, I'm going to get this weird outline around Doug's head. I don't like that. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm just going to sort of bring this in, paint this in so his hair becomes a little bit more gray. I'll play with that. Okay, that's again, it's looking pretty darn good. Now one of the things I want to do, I'm going to get a new brush. I think these windows over here are still a little bit too much. So I'm going to have my highlights and my whites about where they were again. And then um, actually I'm going to take my highlights about 56. I think the whites will be okay. So I'm going to reset those. Then I'm just going to brush down this building over here. So I'm just taking that down a little bit. You can see I'm just sort of layering my changes over and over until I get something I want. Now we could keep going on this for a long time, but we're going to stop there and go to our next step, which is to add a vignette. So we're just going to come down here. We're going to add a little vignette, maybe about, I don't know, 15, 20, something like that. So that's step four. And then let's go on to our last step, which is to do our finishing touches. And this I think just needs a little bit of clarity. So we're going to add I don't know, about 19, 20, something like that. And there you have it. So there is our before, there is our after image. Now, if I had some time, I could tweak this a little bit more. And so what I did is I did tweak this and I've saved it as a snapshot. And there is our final image. I need to crop this because this is going to be a YouTube thumbnail. So I'll crop this to a 16 by nine, put that about right there. Something like that. Nice rule of thirds. That looks pretty good. Here we go. Before, the after, that works just great. Well, thank you for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget to subscribe. Just click that subscribe button right now. Also, check out the Adorama Learning Center. There are tons of articles. It's absolutely free. Zip on over there and see what there is to learn. Well, thanks again for joining me. I will see you again next week.